Hey, everybody. Hey, group. Yeah, what's up, man? Uh, welcome to Little Monsters Movie Podcast. Dino. Ted, number one horror movie podcast on the net. Yeah, in the whole wide world. Um, Tell we, your friends. We, we've gone global. Never mind, um, your friends already know. We uh, we invested in a corporation that sent a satellite up to... Um, it's through the Chinese, so uh, we're, mm-hmm. we're everywhere. Uh, millions and millions of right. Um, right. people watching. And they right sent now. us a whole box of, of little umbrellas. No drinks, but just the little umbrellas that you can put in your drinks. And so I, I you know, I'm, I'm going to get one for my water. A little wooden toothpicks and little paper. Yeah, machine, I just, um, I just ripped. I don't have to buy toothpicks anymore. I just ripped the umbrellas off, and I've got lots of toothpicks now. That's perfect, man. I know. That's I awesome. love those folks. You know, they come up to your knees, right. but I love them. So, so, so yeah, you're. Mm. I don't know where the box is. <laughs> <laughs> what movie are we doing this week? Young Frankenstein. Oh, no. Gene Wilder. It's not Mel even a Brooks, horror movie. 1974. It's a Frankenstein. It's a comedy horror. It's true. So I pick, I picked this one because. He loves Mel Brooks. I love Mel. Well, no, I, I tell you, you what. You do. You love Mel Brooks. I do love Mel Brooks, but I, I love Gene Wilder a heck of a lot more. And uh, I think we talked before. I mean, you, I got to couple comfort actors that just you know i just pop it in just to feel good i mean gene wilder's one of them and woody allen i mean yeah i could go with woody allen yeah and and gene wilder for me i mean you know you go to woman in red and all that other stuff yeah he's just he's awesome man so anything with uh gene wilder and and like i said i love this movie i love mel brooks humor there's a lot of people that would look at it and go that's not even funny which Evidently, Ted just did. This is going to be interesting because he loves it, and while I don't hate it, I don't see why a lot of people think this is funny. There's things I like about it because it's Frankenstein, right? And there's things I appreciate about it because they did put some time and effort and care, right? And th- there's some. Well, yeah, we'll talk I about mean, as the movie goes on, I guess. Yeah, I mean the 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 whole feel of the movie is black and white. It's right? 1974, right? It was a, which was a hard it. sell in the 70s because yeah, was gritty color. But um, Mel Brooks wanted to. To you heard press to think of any other black and white movies in the set. I mean, there were some, but right. I mean, you know, this was a hard sell in the mid seventies. And, and it kept kept that retro nineteen thirties feel to the movie. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Gene I, Wilder look. I mean, it just looks like mm-hmm. straight from nineteen. Well, know. the uh, the sets are fantastic. The way the movie opens is just like how the old Universal horror movies would have opened the right. castle exactly. up on the hill. Yes, the music is really reminiscent of the nineteen thirties. And before we started the podcast, I said I really liked the music. Yeah, I thought the music for this film was excellent, and. Um, I mean, I think just about everybody knows because I think it even states in the credits. But the lab equipment is the same stuff that they used in the original 1931 Frankenstein movie. Right. So it's it's the same lab equipment. So I mean, mm. people cared, and oh, because yeah. they cared, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, uh, I didn't necessarily think it's funny, but there's lots of peripheral things in the movie that I thought were really well done, and I'll talk about those as we go. Oh my but god! I know you're the big fan, and now you know the one-liners. <laughs> and, well, I know um, there's so many in this movie. I but... had watched this movie with him once before, maybe. 15 years ago or something whatever yeah, house time you know, ago yeah one of your old houses i remember we, we watched it and and um I, I you know never really stuck with me so i hadn't really seen it since then so i was eager to give it another chance um and find out what i was missing because i know it's on america film institutes you know right. like 100 comedies um there's some of the one-liners on their one-liners list national film registry which you know the same list that has freaks on it this movie's on it too you yep. know culturally Presence. historical and important <laughs> because of everything you stated, okay. Well, just put the original and, Frankenstein on there then. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Well, it's the adaptation they did. You know, I mean, it's uh, come on. I guess what it comes and, down to, and just to, the humor. I mean, it, Mel Brooks's humor, typically, not always, but typically, is uh, farce. I guess you could say spoofs. Right. So, I mean, and we know a lot of his movies. He's spoofed Robin Hood movies. He's mm. spoofed. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock with High Anxiety, Dracula, Dead right. and Loving It, Frankenstein, of course, Westerns. Yes. Um, I don't even like Spaceballs. Um, <clears throat> I don't, because it made fun of all the movies I really like. <laughs> but that's what's funny about it. And I could laugh at that, it. but it, it, it didn't make fun of it in a funny way, in my opinion. Uh, I, I guess it's it's a simple humor, and um, just, just so you guys don't hate me too much, my idea of funny, all right? And, and you probably love all the things I love. I love old silent comedians. I love Buster Keaton. Right. Charlie Chaplin especially was a genius. I love Laurel Hardy. I agree with you. Three oh, Stooges. 
um, as far as uh, comedy movies. I really love to laugh, but not a lot of comedy movies get me to bust out laugh. One that will always do it is W.C. Fields' uh, It's a Gift. Right. Um, it's a mad, 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 mad world, mm-hmm. uh, which is like a almost a three-hour epic comedy. It's the only epic comedy right. I think there is. There's so many great things in that movie. Yeah. Um, and I like The Big Lebowski. Well, <laughs> that course. always cracks me up. Um, I'm one of those guys. Um, as far as, I, I used to love Monty Python. I still I still do, but I've watched them so many times that right. I, I can just kind of recite it to myself so I don't bother watching them anymore. I'm, those are kind of the movies that I've seen enough. Yeah. Um, maybe kind of like even like Ghostbusters and Back to the Future. There's people who love those movies, but it's like if I never see them again, I'm okay. I've seen them oh, no, so many times. Yeah, there's and I'm, there's I'm plenty. Done. Of, like I said, there's, yeah, there's plenty of movies like and, that. Uh, this is just, this is my comfort film, right. you know? And, and like you said, simple humor, but. Simple humor can be played off as really funny if you got the it right is. actor. And Gene Wilder Gene Wilder's just... Gene good. Um, the only other... The way he speaks everything... Mm-hmm. I know I'm interrupting you, no, but... No, that's you know, fine. Just, you, you are right. Just, um, I guess that's just my point. I, I love to laugh, but... I mean, modern comedies, forget it. I mean, everyone loves Anchorman. I tried watching Anchorman four <laughs> times to find out what was funny about it, and I didn't laugh once. Okay, wait a second. There's something wrong that you actually sat there and watched it. Because times. everyone kept saying, "You gotta give it a, you gotta." Because so I didn't. Because I didn't watch the second or third. I've or never. Fourth time, I've, I've never watched the whole thing. Okay. So I always watched it a little bit further. Like I gave it like 20 minutes, and okay. okay. And I realized 20 minutes isn't enough. You know, <laughs> you got to give a movie like a 30, 40 minutes. And I gave it 30, 40 See, minutes. that's another one. I yeah. love Anchorman. I mean, I love Will Ferrell. I love his humor, too. So Sometimes he I guess funny. But then I thought Step Brothers was not st- funny enough for me to go buy the Blu-ray. But no. funny that, you know, it's like, that could be Those me. are movies that are funny to watch once. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be popping in Anchorman right. or even Step Brothers all the time. But the, the ball, ball scene, you testicle know, scene in there was ab- just yeah, absolutely yeah. I like Abbott and Costello. Funny. You got me into Woody Allen, and I think uh, the one film he did, I don't think it was even a theater movie, it was a TV movie, but mm-hmm. his remake is Don't Drink the Water Yeah, with him and, and Blossom and yeah. Michael J. Fox and Dom DeLuise, yes. which I know is a Mel Brooks uh, right. mainstay there. That was one of the funny... It starts off kind of slow, yeah. but once, they, once it gets going, it is... Gut busting Manhattan murder mystery. If you've never seen Woody Allen movies, it's one that I think we want to do here oh, eventually. Yeah. I love that. Um, it's not a horror movie, but it's kind of like a thriller Woody Allen yeah. style. Like somebody dies and stuff. And you right, know, it's a mystery. So, you know, know. Murder. Murder yeah. mystery in oh, Manhattan. God, I'm scared. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I love to laugh, but it's like not much makes me laugh. Um, it's all right. Hey, to each their own. Everybody's you know, I, different. I love, you know, you know so. Chaplin was a genius. Keaton, just for his physical comedy. Stooges, in moderation. I can't sit there and watch no, no, them all right. day. But, right. you know, one or two a day I can do. And yeah. uh, that's just what I grew up watching. Laurel and Hardy especially, I think, don't get the love that they deserve. Very oh, no, in, in, yeah, very Lauren. subtle, intelligent humor, little things in there that just the looks they would give each other. I've never seen well, see, that's two what I... people that had such synchronicity. Chemistry and, right, yeah. and, and chemistry, maybe besides Evan and Costello. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm old school when it comes to my comedy. I like that stuff. That's what I see in this, though, in, in Gene Wilder and, and Mel Brooks, the typical very subtle humor, but yet... But, hey, if it but, doesn't you know, touch you, then it doesn't... Some things I chuckled. Connect, I definitely you know. chuckled in the movie, but, you know, there's there's running gags, and it's like, okay, after 18 times, it's not so funny hearing the horse neigh. <laughs> but I thought... What's but, that guy's yeah, name yeah, that played the... But yeah, Igor, yeah. What's his name? He's, he's the weirdest looking guy I ever saw in my Marty life. Marty Feldman. So, I liked him. I would say, he's probably my favorite in the movie. You don't like the horses keep saying after the name, but yet, you love Family Guy, right? And you love when Peter falls down and goes, ow! You know what, though? Ow! And about I five get, minutes he goes on, and it's just killing you, right? I, no, you know what? I, I get a little annoyed with that, actually. Do you? I get a little annoyed that it goes on for so long. I realize why they do it, and I'll, I'll just say that this. That will I, make me laugh so hard, I can't I stop. still watch Family Guy, Simpsons, South Park. I still watch all three of those shows. I've watched them since they first started. Yeah. I've never missed an episode. And um, I will admit that I probably don't laugh at any of those. Like, I'll watch it just because, like, on Sundays at 8 o'clock, you know, if, if there's not a great football game on, I'm watching Simpsons and Family Guy. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you one <coughs> cartoon that I still... The only one of those kinds of shows that I still like, and mostly what I watch is cartoons because I have kids. Uh, <laughs> Futurama. Futurama oh, yeah. oh, is yeah. really also, I, I could say as far as comedy, my kind of humor. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the, the, here, the yeah, level of intelligence and, and wit in that show, and I'm not surprised it gets taken off the air 18 times, because I think people just are too stupid to get it. Um, not you, not present <laughs> company excluded. But um, well, see. all of, a lot of yous mm-hmm. out there that didn't watch it when it was on. It's so brilliant. And um, well, even Family Guy getting taken off the air and then re-brought back again. You know, I mean, and it's like, but I hear you. You know what? That's yeah. what I'm getting. I at. rarely laugh. Once in a while, I'll get a little chuckle yeah. out of you know something Homer does or something Peter does or whatever. You know, because sometimes Family Guy can just take you off on a tangent for ten minutes, and right. it's like okay, you know, and I, it, it's okay. I watch it. I, I appreciate it, but I don't laugh anywhere near as much as I used to with those programs, especially South Park. I, I mean. I still watch it because I like no, the characters, yeah, but I really don't laugh very much at it anymore. Right. Once in a while, no, I hear you. But I just watch it out of loyalty because I've always right. watched it. And um, same here. I just feel like if I miss an episode, I'll miss like that one great one <laughs> that I should have watched. Yeah. But Futurama, from beginning to very end, I've gut busted laughed the whole way, and I appreciate <laughs> those guys. Matt Groening, that that is the show. That's his yeah. show. Oh, yeah. um, and it's a shame that so many of you didn't get it or didn't appreciate it or didn't watch it. Maybe mm-hmm. liked it but just didn't watch it. They did shuffle the times around. Yeah. But I own it all on home video and it, it's, it always has to be with me. I, I just I love it. So cool. that, those are my ideas of humor. Now we'll get into Young Frankenstein and find out what Dino's idea of humor is. Yep. Well, I've all my that's all my humor. I know, too. see, I, I know. You know, Lauren Hardy's they're up there as one of my favorites I know, of all I bought, time. I, mean, I mean, you know, I remember I bought that and I still have it. The yeah, big, I got a box set from England. That's yeah, the only place you're going to get every single. Right, we have one here in the states, but it doesn't have the silent ones in it. Right, um, and this had their silent features in it, and some of those are the best ones. Oh, and they had it in God, England. Yeah. I had to buy a special DVD player to play it. Yeah, um, I remember and, we were yeah. we were going back and forth trying to figure out how to play the pal. And, yep, you know, yep. And t- so yeah, we got that, it to work, and, and that was ages ago. Um, yeah, now it's you. That's poppy like the and, crown jewel. You know, oh, I my still God. love it because we still don't have that here, and the picture quality is not super great or anything. But you know, oh, I got them, yeah. and that's it. Heck yeah, man! That's so. I, I love all that stuff, right. man. But that's what happens when we uh, start out with a movie that he's uh, ten minutes in, and we haven't even started. Right. See, so you notice this when I when I don't <laughs> dig a movie so much, I talk about a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> Planet of Vampires. No. Oh, well, <laughs> I know you said sixty minutes. Uh, it was a, we did an hour and a twenty. So yeah. No, hey, but, but uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah. So. so you're right. Young Frankenstein, 1974. This was a movie that uh, was pretty much Gene Wilder's. Um, yeah, h- him and Mel Brooks, Yeah, he wrote, co-wrote it with. Um, well, he had Mel the Brooks. idea. I, I kind of did a little reading on it. This is all like Wikipedia stuff. It's all out mm. there. He, he he it was his kind of story, and he shopped it around. A lot of people just didn't want to do it. I think even Mel Brooks passed on it once. Hmm. And okay. um, you know, he kind of fleshed out a scene with a couple of actors that he hooked up with who are in the movie, and they kind of you know did a little scene for him, and, and he kind of liked that idea. Once he told him that, you know, it's not so much a you know, it, I think Mel Brooks has said something like, you know, we've got Frankenstein, son of Frankenstein. Go, we, there's five Frankenstein right. movies, and they make reference to that in the film. Yeah. Um, you know, there was five of the old Frankenstein movies back then. And he's like, but this one's different in that, you know, it's one of his descendants and he doesn't want anything to do with this wacky family that he comes from. That could be funny. So right. they decided to go ahead and make it. This was, uh, Mel Brooks is always like in his movies. Right. Um, yeah. I think he has like a brief cameo here, maybe in, in one of the crowd scenes. Um, but he's not I think it. it might be his hands at the very beginning of the movie too, taking the mm-hmm. um, Baron von Frankenstein's right. book out of his right, coffin. And um, another thing that Mel Brooks likes to do is what they call uh, break the fourth wall, where he kind of, you know, wink, wink, talk to the audience a little bit to let them know that it's just a movie. Um, some people don't dig that. You know, I'm, I'm not one of those that really dig yeah, that. I like to watch the stare. movie. No, I like that. I'd you know, see, I like that. I hated it in uh, the one James Bond movie, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which I love that movie. Mm-hmm. But that one part just annoys me when you know, he says, well, a movie like that, yeah. This never happened to the other guy, you know, referring to Sean Connery and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't care. I wish they would just have taken that part out. But no, um, no. otherwise, it's an epic Bond movie. But um, I, you know, that's his little shtick that he likes to do. So yeah, I, th- I think this movie uh, separates itself from the Frankenstein. First of right. all, it's a comedy, of course. You know? And it was a very popular but, comedy. It made a lot of money. Oh heck yeah! Uh, it was nominated for a couple of Academy Awards. Yeah. Didn't win. <clears throat> but uh, but hey, you know how often do comedies get nominated for things, especially a Mel Brooks comedy? Right. 
So, um, none, none of the big ones, but little technical awards. Yeah. So, hey, you know, people love it. Yep, it's a great movie. So, yeah, it just kind of starts off with the castle up on the hill. Yeah. And it kind of pans. You know, you get a good view of the castle. And then uh, we see inside the, the, the castle, there's a, there's a casket. It's it's Baron Von, Von Frankenstein. Frankenstein. And I, it's a really cool effect when they open up the coffin. It's an all, oh, yeah. you know, uh, um, decayed corpse. And he's holding, it's, it's a case with his book in it, right? His journal. Right, yeah. And... Uh, you see some hands trying to pull it away, and, and the skeleton hands are pulling, pulling it back. back. It goes back. Pulls it back. Pulls it back. Rips it out of the hands. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of a funny scene, but that's typical Mel Brooks. Something right. stupid, you know? Mm-hmm. But that's what makes it funny. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we find out that it's uh, whoever it is gets it, mm-hmm. the caretaker or something. Caretaker some, of the estate, something yeah. like that, or the yeah. family lawyer or something right. like that. It's actually his will. Not mm-hmm. his will. Oh, yeah, it's, it's his will. It's, Why would he be buried with his will? Exactly. You think they would have read it before he passed away? Right? Oh, anyway, starting already. <laughs> Anyways, they uh, yeah. Then they shoot to uh, uh, Fre- Frederick von Frankenstein. Right. He was he has because purposely he, changed his name. Yeah, he don't want pronounces his name different. I should yeah, say. which is so funny because Marty Feldman tells him later on in the Igor, you know, who should be Igor, but it's well, he Igor. does that on purpose. But, but he goes, <laughs> shouldn't it be Frederick? Um, Frankenstein, and he goes, <laughs> uh, you know, he goes, what does he say? He goes, Froderick. He, Froderick. Said, he, he goes, it should be Froderick, right? Froderick. He goes, no. Oh, you're the eager. No, it's Igor. <laughs> <laughs> it's Froderick. But, um, yeah. But he's a, uh, he's a medical professor yeah. at a uh, medical college, and he's teaching about the brain. You know, he's, he's following in the family footsteps as far as being, you know, a doctor, a physician. Um, but basically referring that they're all kooks, you know. Right, and that's because there's that one student that keeps trying to get his goat. Right, he keeps asking, asking the questions, questions, you know. But wasn't it true that <laughs> he like, I, I didn't he the reanimate the, the corpse of the? Yeah, no. all he needs to do is like a Herbert West snap the pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Herbert reanimator. Right, um, and um, he even says something like, you know, you know, his theories were doo doo. <laughs> yeah, well, that's Gene Wilder. Yeah, he talked his the way he talks and everything is just so stupid and funny. I mean, doo doo, it's doo doo, you know. And Gene. I like how his I mean, his hair's all over. He's he looks like he's straight out of the thirties. Well, man. this I is mean, just a couple years after Willy Wonka, which yeah, you know, really, I mean, this was the movie that gave Gene Wilder a hit. I mean, I think I think Blazing Saddles maybe did that come before this or after this. After this. This is 1974. Right. When was Blazing Saddles? I just can't remember. 76? And that's another one, you know, I've watched it. I know my father-in-law wanted to watch it with me because he said he loved it. I watched it. I I chuckled a bit. (laughs) You just got to like the humor. That's all. It's a segment of... I mean, I, I, you know, it's not like... I don't realize it's funny. I I see that it's supposed to be funny. It's just, it's not funny. Okay, well, Gene Wilder's at the um, so he had his, so this was kind of his hit because he had a couple of like failure. You know, Willy Wonka wasn't a big hit when it came right. out. It's, it's a huge family movie now, but it wasn't a hit when it came out at all. Craziness, and, man! I know, and, and see, that's a movie I love. Maybe because Mel Brooks didn't have his hands on it, and um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, and. Um, so he still kind of yeah has that crazy hair look that you're oh well Gene Wilder's about. always got that hair yeah, but just the something. way it's back with the mustache and all the that. The thing is, I like the guy, <laughs> and I, I really the, like Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder's awesome, like, man. Stir crazy with Richard Pryor. Heck yeah! I mean, I mean those are now, good movies. Now, what did you think of that? That comedy was just awesome. Well, it wasn't Mel Brooks, so yeah, it was funny. Well, nah, you know what? Whatever. Though, in a movie like that, it's really Richard Pryor that's funny. All right, well, Richard they, Pryor. They both play off themselves. Oh, are you it's kidding true. me? Gene Wilder hanging up there in the, the sale. He, the, the he can't cell hold a candle and, and to Richard Pryor. Drops down he and can't. I mean, if well, you Richard got one Pryor, guy and Richard Pryor, you're watching Richard Pryor. He anyways, was Gene Wilder. Um, he's. <laughs> I, I do like in the movie where he's he's telling the students all you know everything about the brain and all that. And, right. Um, he, he turns around to it, like wash his hands. And he just like dips them he in the water. Di- he dips just like the ting- fingertips in the water. And, and just like you, you know, know, I think it's because of the chalk. Because I used to teach before I, I worked. But in it was just field. so dainty, and I'm just like the chalk on your fingers. But that was just so funny, and that would drive me crazy. Yeah, when I would like go that. home from a day of teach, I'd just chalk all over me because I was a chalk guy, always writing on the board. Yeah, chalk, and I didn't have one of them good things to put your chalk in to hold it. Oh, jeez, chalk all over me. <laughs> so maybe that's that's kind of what I took it as. You oh, know, that he was could, but be, then he does be. it a couple times where he's not using chalk. I think right, so. right. But, but anyways, yeah. What the, then they end up bringing the um, 
Well, the caretaker they comes in in the, in the uh, background, a he's bringing the will. Right. But then they bring in the volunteer. Right, the, yeah, the guys with the will sitting in the back watching the class. And uh, he's like a, laying on a table. He's he's a like a guinea. You pig. You know one part I did kind of laugh at when he climbs off the table. Well, you know you, you know who <laughs> that is. You know who that is too. He's he he was in the Sanford and Son episode. He was the bum who laid in the bathtub. If you're a fan of Sanford and Son, I am. And um, the newspaper covered him up, mm-hmm. and that Fred Sanford could not get him out of the yard. Because, you know, mm-hmm. he gets sued because of business. Right. So he stayed there and he gave him bear after bear after bear. And there he's, Fred Sanford's going, oh, <laughs> he's tricking him, you know, him and Lamont, you know. Wait until he has to go up the stairs to go pee, you know, and he comes back. I kind of remember that. I just don't remember it being him. So That's him, yeah. That's and, you him. know, Richard Pryor was one of the writers on Sanford and Son. There you go. There you see, there you go. it all comes full circle on Little Monsters Movie Podcast. <laughs> But, so but yeah, I, yeah, I, I did kind of laugh it's out loud funny. when he got off the table because it's it's just a gurney, a little stretcher, and he climbs down like he's up really high. <laughs> it was kind of funny because oh, he tells him to hop off the cart. He's like, uh, he goes, nice, nice hop. hop. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> and he's trying to explain the difference between um, the uh, you know like the autonomic and the central nervous system, <laughs> and um, you know how you know if you go to bring your Leg up to somebody, you know. He's talking, and then what, is, what does he say? Something you dirty, you dirty. Son of a... Well, well, he 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 clamps the back. Well, he clamps well, he does the back it at first, his... and then he flinches. The guy flinches. And yeah, that's, you know that's you know the reflexes. Yeah, if you're going to kick somebody in the nads, you know, right. And, and then um, he does what I think you were about to say. Yeah, he, he puts the probe, you know, the the clamps, whatever, behind the, the clamps neck, a couple of nerves. The, yeah, on the back of the neck, basically saying that you know the nervous system that's clamped. I don't think so, it's that easy though. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then he I've goes, never seen that. No, yet. but but then he goes back up to him and he stands by him and he goes, "You dirty rotten son of a!" And, and, and you know he, he needs him and then, and then he does it again mm-hmm. and he said, but the way he says it, Ted, is right. so funny. You dirty rotten son of a skirt. Well, yeah. I think the the oh, and I think this is probably the last funny. part of the movie where I laughed out loud is when they're wheeling him away. It's, oh, and he's holding his nuts. <laughs> and his mother goes, "Give him an extra dollar. Yeah, give him an extra buck. <laughs> an extra buck." And uh, yeah, that that okay. Now, if the whole movie had been like that, you know, like you know, just kicks to the groin. Because <laughs> I like that as much as anybody. Oh, <laughs> so. So uh, yeah, then um, yeah, and then that he, student's irritating him a little bit. Yeah, more. always wanting to probe him about you and know his family and Doctor Frankenstein and bringing back the dead. And he yeah. does keep saying it's Frankenstein. Oh yeah, and they do finally get it. But he's sitting down in the chair, and um, that's when he um, gets mad at that student. Finally, right? He picks and up he, the scalpel. Says you have a better chance of, of giving life to this scalpel than dead tissue. And you know he takes he's it, going, slams it down to the scalpel, goes right in his leg. Yeah, and he goes, which is so funny, he goes. After he tells goes, class <laughs> dismissed. <laughs> and just the way Gene Wilder I mean, says it, it's just awesome. I don't know, it's and, just, and that's been another. What other movie oh. did someone do something like that? I, I can't remember, but uh, you could tell he's in pain. He's yeah, yeah. Back just and, you know, stab oh. himself with something. It's hilarious. But uh, then they, they that they lawyer to, guy lets him know that he's uh, inherited the estate. Yeah, and, um, and he's you know, got gives the him will, the gives will. him the will and stuff, and. So, I mean, it's a big hunk of property, so he's going to go up there. It's a family estate, so he's going to go say goodbye to his fiance, who's a uh, Madeline Kahn, Kahn, who's who in, like, all these movies. Mel Brooks movies, but mm-hmm. she's, she's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it is a I, little funny. I think Madeline Kahn's mm-hmm. funny as heck. You know, and, when they go to the kiss her, no, 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 the lipstick. And, yeah, he goes, yeah. no he, tongue. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, yeah, throughout the whole movie, he's, he's, you can't touch her. Right. Because, you know, they're... The dress, the boa, the hair. Yeah, please don't mess up my lipstick, and he goes, oh. You know, it's so annoying, actually. But, right. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'd be like, you, you, I'm kissing He's all you, cool man. with it. Yeah, okay. You know. But, but um, I'm get on the train, man. All aboard. Right. Yeah, they got you know. All aboard. So she's like, oh, I miss you. Oh, yeah. goodbye, sweetie. Yeah, don't touch. You know, touch pull her hand. The nails. The nails, yeah. I feel like, Phew. But yeah, oh, I love ya. the scene. Oh, and the, so he gets on the train, and they're going from... Um, where do they start off at? Well, the guy says, um, New York, get here right, right, and then York. next they're like in Bucharest. Transylvania, <laughs> Transylvania. Took a train all the way. It he is goes, a different train. He goes, oh, so. thank those Transylvanias, Transylvanias. And, um, you know, so, and then the train stops, which cracks me up with the, the boy out there. Mm-hmm. He, um, Gene Wilder hollers out to him. He goes, is this the Transylvania station? He goes, yeah, yeah, this and Transylvania. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, hey, do you want a shoe shine? Oh, hey, by the way, do you want a shoe shine? And he says that all in American, you know, like, yeah. no, just, 
funny, Ted. Mm. Un- unbelievable. Mm. Oh yeah, this little this little. Boy I mean, it's out not there, gut but... busting funny. No, no. But uh, and also mm. another thing I like about the film is they use the old style uh, scene transitions, right? Um, like the old scope coming. Yeah, out. Yeah, the scope big, coming out know, or the wipes, which like right. they had in Star Wars too. They kind of use those again in Star Wars, but yeah. Uh, um, not a lot back in the old days. A lot of movies did that, but then it kind of fell out of popularity, and um, you know, because it is an effect, and it, you know, and it does create some right. you know, optical issues. I think, yeah. but uh, I think it looked cool. I think yeah. you know, I, I like how they did the, that. They the, tried the to stay the... true to those old movies, right? And they so, did that very, very well. Right, and I don't have a problem with like any of the sets or anything like that. I think it all looks fantastic, fantastic. You know, yeah. um, doesn't look cheesy. Uh, the acting is, but the sets are great. But, um, but so yeah, hey, we meet Igor, and that's the part I, I we were kind of. Well, he's he's off on the, the train station. He hears right. a, a leg dragon, right? <laughs> you know, the hunchback. Yeah, you know <laughs> what hunch or what humper. <laughs> but anyways, he uh, that's when he they both introduce himself. You know, it's Igor, Igor, Frodrick, Frodrick. Right. It shouldn't it be Frederick, you know. But anyways, um, the, and what's the, the walk this way part? This is silly. That walk is this. hilarious. He, he's got a little cane. <laughs> Martin, you know, Igor goes, walk this way, and he's got the little cane, he's going down little steps, and Gene Wilder takes it, and he's he walks this way, but he does give a glance after, like, this is so stupid. He looks at the camera, like, did I really just do that? That's what's funny about it. But whatever, I'm not going to convince Ted, you, do whatever you want, you, you know. Trash it, whatever. I'm not, but I'm not funny trash it. is. I think I'm saying a lot of nice things. About th- these are these are actually things that were cracking me up. But anyways, yeah, 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 the '70s know. people didn't know any better. That's true. Yeah. But then we're gonna meet Terry Gar. Oh who, my god! Ever Inga. since I've ever seen her, I've thought she was beautiful. Oh, this movie, any movie, she's I remember been in. her from the uh, you know the underwear commercial. Was she in her underwear? Oh, yeah. Man, she, I got it. Back, back in this day. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, she's uh, Inga. Yes. Very yeah. attractively. I don't, you know, I don't know why. And she, and he, I mean, well, like 70s, 80s, she was in tons of movies. Tons of movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and he, lovely. They're getting ready to get in a big wagon. and uh, Yeah, the big He throws wagon. the thing and she goes... He goes, what's that? And he goes, that's Inga, your assistant. Right. And he, he looks up there and she, he looks at her and she goes, you want that roll in the hay? Roll, roll, roll. roll. It's, silly. it's just so silly stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but, but he um, takes him up to the castle, and yeah. um, and they hear they hear lightning. You know, he's, yeah. He goes, "Don't be scared. It's an only an electrical discharge." And then right. you hear the wolves going, Woo! <laughs> and, and um, you know, that's that's where he goes. She goes, "Werewolf," and he goes, "Werewolf," and he goes, "There wolf." Yeah, just yeah. stupid. So, I know. I, I'm, <laughs> quote, I'm quoting this stuff, and you're just but, like, I mean, that's, that's okay because that, that you know, there's other people that have done that humor too. That that's not uh, you know. But the main know. thing is just watching Terry Gar in that uh, way. Right, right. I mean, I was pretty much occupied the rest of the movie. Yeah. So that so, that can keep you going through the. Through that the kept movie, me going. But. Thank you, Terry. You kept me going through that movie. Uh, um, and then yeah, they get those shots of the castle again. They get up there, and it's. <laughs> um, Who's this lady at the at the at the door with Cloris Leachman? Cloris Leachman and who she, she's uh, like the housekeeper or something, the mansion yes, keep, yes, for castle keeper. The, yeah, yeah, she's kept she's kept the estate forever. Okay, it's big old the, mole on her face. And yeah, then we're gonna Frau Brucker, uh, Frau Brucker, and, and every, every time they say the name, the horses neigh. They go, mm-hmm. don't know why. Frau Brucker, why? Mm-hmm. But why? Because Mel Brooks likes to just do stupid stuff that makes no sense. Stop and there. Aiden, I mean, Aiden, I'm, I'm sorry, Ted. Um, wow. I think I just cut myself. <laughs> Remember what I said? If I made a movie, I would put all kinds of stupid stuff. Like like a short little sketch. Like you were riding down the street. You know the little signs in the side of the road? It says dip in road. Mm-hmm. You know? And as we're driving around by, okay, we'd see some weird looking guy. Just a some dip. little dip. <laughs> just standing up. Just go. Oh, <laughs> you know, I mean, that kind of humor. I think that's funny as hell. That would be funny. Well, if we did it, it would I'm not be sure why I called you Aiden. That's my son. But anyways. No problem. No problem. But anyway, we look alike. <laughs> but anyways, he, um, well, when they did arrive there. I'm his cousin. <laughs> Probably because I'm over here all the time. There you go. Um, but, but I do like when they first actually pull up there and um, they boom, boom, you know, because they're huge knockers. And he's, he's, right. he's, he's reaching Terry Gar off of the. The nice wagon, he goes, nice knocker. And she goes, thank you. Right, right. Yeah. I like that part. You know, I so, probably would have said the same thing. Oh, funny as heck. 
But um, yeah, so she introduces him in, and she um, <laughs> the interior of the castle is excellent. Oh, I mean, I it is. Compare it to you know the old Universals, the Hammer movies. It's just it's awesome. Um, and know, what's funny? Spare what's, no expense. Exactly. And I love how she takes them up to the their rooms, mm -hmm. and she grabs a big candelabra that isn't even lit. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, is the thing it's even, not lit? even lit? No, no, she's walking, and as she's walking up the staircase, she turns around and stops, and she goes, be very careful. The, the stairs, stairs can be treacherous. treacherous. And they just look at her like, what? What are you talking about? I mean, just... <laughs> Might have been funnier then if, like, she fell. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then she's she's basically in Take them to room. their rooms. You know, they all yeah. got their own chambers, and and she's um, she's she, you can tell she's kind of in love with um, the original bear, Frankenstein, bear and, you right? Because uh, when Gene Wilder's unpacking, she's asking him if he wants uh, brandy before bed, mm -hmm. um, if he wants uh, warm milk. Yeah, she goes. You want some brandy? Ovaltine? Some warm, <laughs> some warm milk, perhaps. And then no, she goes, nothing. Ovaltine. Ovaltine. <laughs> I love how she says that. Ovaltine. That's just so funny. He he mentions about like the, his. Grandfather, you know, his books, and he's like, you know, where's his private library? These are, you know, books any doctor would have. Right. So that's going to set up something later on. Yeah. Um, so she kind of leaves, but as he's unpacking, he's got a little, like, shaving mirror or something there. <laughs> and he sees her kissing his grandfather's mirror. portrait in the mirror. Yeah. So you realize that they've had a, a relationship. Right. And then uh, later in the evening... He's having a nightmare. Yeah, he's having... I forget what it's about. You know, like, I'm not a Frankenstein, I'm a Frankenstein or something right. like that. Yeah, and, uh, I forget what he's saying too. Just like you know, I, I don't believe or so I don't know something right. like that. And Inga but, um, comes in because she hears him, you know, calling out in the, in the night. And they hear music of violin playing in the background. Right, and it sounds like it's coming from behind the bookcase wall. Yeah, so, so they, they jump up and they think there's maybe a passage back there, which all these old castles have one. Right, right. right. <clears throat> my house has one. I got one too. Yeah, yeah. But, I um, built it though. I, I built my passage, and it's it's just I didn't even tell my family, but I did it on a weekend when right, we were yeah. gone. Mm -hmm. And you know, just you know, when, when you know my wife's gonna ask me to do something, I just slip out, and you know she has to do it herself. He's got his uh, little Nintendo DS down there, and right? Little right candle, you know, Gatorade, um, some Snickers bars, right? Some potted meat and Ritz crackers, and uh, so a big yeah. jar of um, that uh, marshmallow fluff, marshmallow fluff, um, you know, with for the potted meat. And so, um, you know that's where I go. That's that's my spot. So they um so 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 he figures out the uh, candle right. And so when the, they pull the candle out know, of the, the and it holder. flips flips them behind right. And sometimes it's he goes he goes put the candle back right. And he goes wait when, when, when you put the, I'm going when you put the candle back I'm going to wedge myself between right. the bookcase and the wall. <laughs> and, you know, okay, and, now put the candle back. back. In. <laughs> <laughs> and, she puts and then it's again. cute when she gets stuck back there. She, she says the same the thing. Candle back. back. <laughs> so. And, and he, he figures out put up and back down. Real right. Quick, you know? Right. But and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little passageway down in there. Yeah, um, and they, and they, they see the light down there, and they figure out, and they end up seeing the um, the you know the old laboratory that right. is you know great grand great grandfather well whoever right. And then Baron somehow Baron. isn't uh, Igor skulking around back there. Oh yeah, and, well, um, yeah. That's uh, they come. Well, this is what I understand too, because it says two months dead. There's skulls on a shelf. Oh yeah, it says two yeah. months dead. That's right. This is it. Get, get two years it. dead. Cobwebs everywhere. Yeah, one, and then it says still alive or, or fresh, fresh, freshly, freshly dead or something like that. Yeah, and it's, and it's him sitting there. sitting there with his hey! eyes. I mean, you gotta remember, Marty Feldman's eyes are bulging and stuff, you know, yes. and which gets to the next scene when they get into the laboratory. And um, he goes, "There's a switch right there to turn on light." He goes, "He goes, uh, he, he goes, I'm not going to touch it." So Gene Wilder goes up there and goes, Shh, and it goes and electrocutes. And he, he goes, "Damn your eyes!" And he goes, "Too late, too late, right?" You know? So <laughs> yeah, you know, he's goofing on himself, you know. But um, I love in all these movies, they just light a candle and it just lights up the whole room. Oh yeah, I, mean, I can't see four inches in front of my face with a candle. Fab broker. But mm. um, yeah, so. <laughs> So they um, they do see the light down there, and that's right. when he eventually goes down into the room past the laboratory, right. and they find out that it's actually they see a cigar lit there. Nobody's there. There's a violin down and, there. And and that's his. That's and his. the journals, the books, the his private books that detail how he conducted his experiments and you know with the creature that he created. And the and book on the table it. table says how I did it, it. <laughs> by, by Frank. You know Frank. So it's like um, very funny. I mean that's hilarious. And um, 
Yeah, so he's got the library, so he's, he's going to get things rolling. Right, he's going to start he's, looking at that journal and realize that, uh, you know, it just might work. Yeah, he, he goes in these rampages with his eyes, like like from the early movie era, like mm-hmm. where they express themselves. Yeah, yeah, the eyes the are silent dark. Era, like, and, you know, it's, I just, I love it. And mm-hmm. he's just screaming it, you know, I mean... It, Right, and he's gonna it. he's gonna continue his his, his grandfather's work, yep. and I think they even flash to like the portrait where he was all dour, the yep. grandfather before now he's smiling. He's smiling. <laughs> so yeah, they're gonna you know start on the experiments, right? Yeah. It'll be uh, yeah, Inga and Igor, and they're gonna you know get, they have to get a body. Yep, you yeah. know that that it all starts next with morning. That. That I like how they're eating breakfast and. Um, they're figuring out. Well, we were Gene Wilder's like we're going to need a very good specimen, which is kind of funny in itself. How they're mm-hmm. figuring all this out, like it's got to be large in stature. <clears throat> Don't ask me why. You can't yeah, do right. a midget well, or a they small said because guy. You know, or the veins will be bigger. Everything will be everything bigger. Will it'll be, be easier, I guess. And she goes, even his Schwanzfinger. 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 She goes, oh yeah. Schwanzfinger sticker. Yeah, that's. But, I think it's the only time they actually say it in the movie. But there's little references to the Schwanzfinger. Yeah. You know, I used to work at a, at a nursing home. When I, a long time ago, I was a teenager, and uh, there was a little old lady there, and and and, and she would say that sometimes, you know, she would say schwanz. Yeah, schwanz <laughs> it's it's little, hanging out. Your schwanz yeah, is hanging out. Oh, you you would like this schwanz. <laughs> oh my! I remember there was another lady. Just not to go over a little tangent because it is kind of funny. These were all like Alzheimer's people. So, yeah. And I remember it was her birthday, and and I think one of the nurses asked what she wanted for her birthday, and she's just sitting in her little chair with the tabletop so she doesn't fall. And she's like, mm. I want something about that big and oh, about that thick. <laughs> oh my god! I like the women when they get older; they're the worst. <laughs> I came up there one time mm-hmm. to visit because mm-hmm. um, I used to work there with his wife a right. long time ago. That's actually how we met. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh woman scared the living daylights out of me. I don't know if you know who it was, but the one woman who would sit, she she was, you know, the tray like held her into her chair. And she would have a rosary, I think, in her hand. But she mm-hmm. she would be like just sitting there ranting and, you know, like in a foreign language, I think. Like... <laughs> prayers and and stuff like that and i'm just like it looked like something straight out of the exorcist yeah. and freaked me out i could talk for hours scary. on stories that was scary you know you just you know. i mean i mean it, it's just an old lady who's right. demented and but you can't help to get Sometimes that image they are, out of your head. I mean, funny without even realizing it. I just oh my god you know you, you get to you get to like those little characters oh i'm, I'm <laughs> so. sure yeah you, you know if but anyways... Um, I had yeah. a 100-year-old lady tell me I was lazy one time. <laughs> she made her own bed. She's like, you're a nice buddy, but you're lazy. <laughs> 100-year-old woman. Yeah, you know, you don't got 15 people to take care of, lady. <laughs> you can get yourself dressed. You can make your own bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, Igor's kind of drawing out what, oh they, my what God. they need. And, and that's what gets me. is like they think this is the perfect specimen, and it looks so deformed right. and disturbed. Igor sketches out what they're going to do, the body. Right. And it just looks like this... It looks like Frankenstein. Gi- yeah. yeah it I looks mean, like Frankenstein's monster. And he goes, they're like, perfect. Yeah. You know. And then the next thing, there must have been an execution. There's some big, big giant guy hanging. Hanging, yeah. hanging by the... And he's really just like swinging. Yeah, I mean, thank God they found a seven-foot guy, you right. know. Just, so, you know. Uh, played by Peter Boyle, who, who's not that big. <laughs> but, uh, right. Well, yeah, you put yeah. that six, he's got those six inches on his... On. Kiss boots. And so then we get to like the graveyard scene. The the graveyard guys are burying him, and you know Igor and, and Doctor Frankenstein are just standing right there by the gate. I mean, out in the open, and they dig in with shovels. They're going to start digging up because you, as we know from Reanimator, you got to have a fresh corpse. You do, yes. Right, it's just not going to work. So many. And I love when they're digging. It's just. Phew, oh yeah, phew. well, Marty Feld, <laughs> Igor's just. Phew, phew, phew. You can just see it just flying about. He's like picking up like maybe a teaspoon. Right. At a I time. mean, you you, you kind of want to you know put the dirt back when you're done so it doesn't look like you just. Well, when they the buried grave. the body, did you see when earlier when they did bury this body? I mean, it was this much off the ground, so it's right. like it, you know you just t- spray the dirt aside and it's right there. Right. But anyways, when they dig it up, they show they cut to a scene to where they're underneath it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they got underneath it because yeah, the hole that. was cut. <laughs> Right directly. They're, right they're pushing it up. Yeah, they're pushing it up. There's no way they can slide in and underneath it. What did they it, say? Something? Um, 
this is terrible, Gene Wilder. Right, or something said, like it couldn't be anywhere or something. And then yeah. it starts raining or something like that. Um, yeah. And they just, um, yeah, stare. Yeah. And then, yeah, cool. This is all like hammered gothic, you know, 1930s yeah, universal awesome. gothic. Where they're, you know, Transylvania got, roads, brick yeah, roads. They've got the, the coffin on a cart, hand cart, and they're pushing it through the town in the middle of the it night. It starts going faster and faster and faster and, and faster. And, and, and the thing falls off. It flies <laughs> off and just shoots off. Right. That is funny. The arm's sticking out of it. That and, part and, is kind of funny. And, 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 and the police officer comes by. Right, you know, right. Like, like the little like England Bobby walking the beat. Yeah. And, you know, and says, you know, what you doing? Who are yeah, you? Yeah, they're just and standing by. And, 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 and this is kind of cool. This is clever. Uh, Gene Wilder's sitting there with, with the corpse's arm sticking out like it's yeah, his arm. Like it's... <laughs> And you can tell they're blatantly different hands, <laughs> right? But in case he's going like this, the corpse hands like this, and he's just sitting there picking <laughs> at it, pretending it's his, right? So that 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 part is is kind of funny. That that would be like what would probably really happen, right? Try, you know, you and I are taking a corpse through the street, and it falls off the car. I, I, uh, Iger must be underneath too because he, he'll like kick twice mm-hmm. to get him like to bring the hand up in the air. You know, it's like it's funny, man. It's it's hilarious. Yeah, but, things um, like that are you know that's that's. I mean, I, I think the story of Frankenstein could make a a, a cool comedy movie. Yeah. Um, even if it wasn't done like as a farce, do it like as a you know play it for serious, but um, you know not with the you know tongue in cheek and winking at the audience. But um, if you did like a uh, you know a real comedy of Frankenstein, I think I think that would be cool. I think that would really work. Frankenstein so sends, the comedy. All right. He, well, well, he well, sends Igor out to go get a brain, and he wants. Well, 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 first, brain, first right? is fu- something funny in the. Um, oh, did I miss something in the laboratory when um, they do got the bo- a body there and stuff like that, and they're looking at it and all that, and um, he he does go tell him to go um, get the brain from the thing, but he pats mm-hmm. his shoulder and the humps on the other right, side. He goes, right. "Wasn't your on the?" And he just well, well, shakes his head. Well, you know, yeah, never right. mind. Um, yeah, he sends him off for Hans Delbruck. He's a, a genius, you know, brain to the brain laboratory. Right. And know. a lot of these parts come directly out of um, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein from Universal. Mm. You know, sending, um, you know, the, the assistant to go get the brain. Mm-hmm. And in the original film, oh, yeah, they play the, it. Uh, the original brain gets knocked over and destroyed, and he grabs the other one, which was a criminal brain. Right. And that's this pretty one's, much what happens here. Yeah, it's abnormal. Ab- abnormal. Abnormal. Which, yeah, that's what he said. Because he asks them later, you know, what's what brain did you get when they find out that this Frankenstein is not smart? Right. You know, he Gene Wilder, or I'm, I keep calling him, Froderick. Um, Froderick. He's sitting down, he goes, what was the name you asked him? And he goes... No, I didn't get Hans Delbruck. Um, he, he goes, what was the name on it? He goes, Abby. He goes, hmm, Abby Normal. <laughs> so, Abby Normal. You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> but I do like when he is getting a brain. He's those big balls. Yeah, guys. he winks right at the around, audience, you know, going Points like to that. it, you know. But lightning scares him, and he drops it, and he gets the Abnormal. Right, brain, and he sees himself know. in the mirror and just drops it. Yeah. But, um, and, you know, that's like a classic thing in like almost all the, you know, Frankenstein movies, except like maybe the hammer one. The hammer one, he, he got the brain he wanted. Right. Um, it just, you know, Different then style. it got damaged and it didn't work out and he had to take what he had to get. Right. Um, that's what I like about the hammer ones. He got the parts himself, <laughs> you know, he didn't send Igor. He didn't have, well, in the first one, he didn't have an Igor. He had a guy named Fritz, I think in the second one. But, yeah. Um, well, what's that, um, new, um, Penny Dreadful? I don't know if you've been watching. I've it. heard of it. I've never watched it. It's got all the uh, classic like monster, like Frankenstein, and um, oh really? All, all of the characters from those uh, that time period. Uh, mm-hmm. that Van Helsing. Um, is it a, is it a good program? Or? It is a good program. Very dark and um, yeah, really good. Really well, that's good. a key. I got to catch up to it. Yeah, it is. It's um, I think Fish. stars. Stars. Yeah. Okay. But I, I'd recommend watching that, man. That's it's a good one. It's really and the, good. the actual creatures are in it, or just uh, the well, characters? Well, Frankenstein looks like he's a Frankenstein. Yeah, they, the monster Frankenstein monster. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they they put them together, and he he lived under this theater. You know, what's the premise of that show? I've heard of it. I just don't know. Oh, boy, I'd have to. That's got the Ava Green in it, right? Do a little more research. Yeah, right, yeah. She's, I'll watch it. Yeah. Well, her <laughs> character, yeah, she's just like possessed or some kind of demonic entity in her and you know there's like the vampire side of it mm-hmm. and um i've got to catch up so that's why i'm mumbling my words here Dang, I, you're you usually know. up on every show there is well i gotta catch up on that one but it's a very good 
very good show. Like I finally just caught up on Game of Thrones. Well, well, now you can catch up and do this one. Check this one out. You'd right. like it. All right, but, cool. but we get back to where he's, he's basically yeah, going to animate Frankenstein. Sew the brain you know. up. and um, yeah, He's he's telling yeah. Igor to flick the switches. Right. And, and I do love all there. the equipment in there. Oh, I mean, yeah. Not just because it was from the original Frankenstein. I mean, even if it wasn't. I mean, it just the whole setup is cool. And I do really like the scene. And it's, I'm not talking about it as a comedy, just as, as a horror movie. Right. When he's going up, when it's when it's when they're lifting Raising it up to the, the and he's platform. got his arms out, almost like he's God. Yeah, oh you know, yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah, you know, and um, puts those big goggles forget the, forget on. the comedy part for a second. That's just a really cool scene, well, and yeah. I really like that. Yeah. That'd have been something I would have loved to have seen in the original um, Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he's up there and lightning striking, electricity's going. He's telling him throw switch one, switch two, mm-hmm. and I like how switch three says the works. <laughs> above it. Um, everything starts blowing. He's got these goggles. He's listening with his stethoscope. <laughs> yep. um, as it turns out, eventually he doesn't. He doesn't think he succeeded at first. Once he's brought back down. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's mad because he's, he's putting not a stethoscope. A he's not hearing nothing. He's pounding on it, pounding on it. Right. And, and he does say, uh, you know, I, you know, I understand it didn't work out. Dig quiet dignity. All oh, right. He's like, you know, like if that. science teaches us anything, you have to accept your. Successes and failures with quiet dignity. But he freaks and out and, he go, and he's screaming. He's going, I've been a failure. This is not I don't want to live. I don't want to live. This is not me. <laughs> you know? And then, yeah, and then he kind of looks at the audience, you know, quiet, you know, quiet dignity. Yeah, perhaps. I, of course. Like that, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I love, you know, I love Gene Wilder's overacting in all his movies. I mean, when he does that, just uh, is. I mean, you, you've seen him in um, everything. Uh, I want, you I've ever, seen him in lots of movies. Everything you ever. He, that's a Woody oh, Allen movie. Woody Allen, yes. Everything you ever I've seen. Just about, about every Woody Allen movie. Except yeah. maybe, like, maybe, like, his last three or year four most recent ones I haven't seen yet. Uh-huh. I have them, I just haven't watched them. Midnight in Paris. I think Paris Midnight just... in Paris I watched. Okay, okay. And, which is really good. Owen Wilson's that. Right. That um, I think after that I just haven't seen his new ones. I have them, I always get them, and you know, I've got copies I, of them. I'd say they're worth watching, but yeah, still not. That's the, a his lot. newest one with Joaquin Phoenix looks really riveting and yeah, good. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes, but that looks very good. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, we get to the next scene where the town's full. Town meeting, you know, they don't like the idea that there's a Frankenstein back in their town, and and this is where they make mention of the Universal movies. He's like, you know, I remember what happened the last five times, regard, you know, referring. Yeah, to... because there's a, there's a character in the, out there that's over emphasizing mm-hmm. everything, like the Frankenstein is he's going to, t- you know, he's he's, he's creating right. a monster, he's going to do, you know, he's trying it's, to get his point across, right? And they're like. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, I remember stuff, what happened know. the last five times. Referring to Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, <laughs> right. Son of Frankenstein, Ghost mm. of Frankenstein, and House of Frankenstein. Oh, Those are the God. universal, the classic five yeah. there. And this um, this is where Inspector Kemp... Is that his name? Yeah, comes what in. What is up with this dude? He's got a wooden arm, and when they introduce him, he lights a cigarette, I mean a cigar, and he's basically knocking it down to get it to where it needs to go. And I mean, I guess that. it's kind of cool, you know, he had to work out a little routine there. Yeah, and, and, and the funny part is That's of it bit. is before he starts to talk, he puts his monocle up into yeah. his eye where With it's his an eye patch. patch. So he's got an eye patch, and he puts his monocle up there. And he, he keeps it there the rest of the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, little little things about that. Stupid little thing. I don't know. It's, it's like a German Cluso wannabe. Yeah, he's um, like, um, dice, dos, both. Like even the other people and, and the they don't even understand. Yeah, they don't know what he's said. saying. Although most of the time I can understand what he's saying. Like, give him a chance, give yeah, him a chance. I guess the, the, the gag, yeah. So he's going to go up to the house and kind of question them and, and see, you know, if everything's on the up and up. Um, so that's what he's going to be. And, and I like how he lights his, he, he's got a wooden arm. That's why yeah. he kind of does it this way. Mm-hmm. And I like how he's, uh, you know, he lights his cigar with, with his finger. Because right. <laughs> it's know. wooden, you know. Right. Yeah. So he, he yeah, but, and then we go to so the He's going to go up there, check them out. But yeah. meanwhile at the castle, they're all having dinner. Um, and they're they're doing eating dessert. Yeah, Jean's upset because yeah. he didn't, you know, succeed and... She says something like, uh, you know, you haven't even touched your food. And he's like, fine. I yeah. touched my food. <laughs> <laughs> like a little kid, you know. Here, I touched and, and it. He, yeah, he mentions, the. he says, you know, what is this dessert? You know, I don't usually like dessert, but this is great. And, and you know, you do hear, you like mm-hmm. it? And you hear, mm-hmm. which is what we've seen before that in between here is that the, you know, the little hand of the monster is starting to move now. And Frederick goes um, mm-hmm. to Igor. <laughs> so you really like it, huh? Yeah, you, you, made, a, you, you made a yummy, go, yummy, you, you tummy made a yummy, <laughs> yummy sound. <laughs> But uh, yeah, then they. Show that's cool. Little the, fingers are moving, yeah. and, and 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 that's cool. That's cool. So they they continue to hear that noise. They go down there and sees that yeah, this dude's alive. 
and they they're going to let him go. It's, it's so funny. Yeah, he lets him go let because him he's, he's down there and he's looking in his eye. And Peter Boyle makes kind of a, a, a different Frankenstein for for the. Yeah. I think he sets himself out as a good Frankenstein, right? Um, and I love how he's got a zipper. Yeah, there's a little zipper on right the side here of on the neck. his neck. Just so, so you can staples up here. That you looks can conveniently <laughs> unzip this to get to some of the arteries. Maybe I, I, I don't it. know. Zip. <laughs> but that, anyways, he gets up and he's moving a little bit because. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frederick tells him, you know, let's sit up, right. stand up, mm-hmm. and um, and and you see Igor just over there on his side, getting ready to light a cigarette, right? You know, just for and no reason, right, he's that not little thing just freaks and, him and out, and it freaks him out, and he grabs Frederick Gene Wilder and yeah. starts choking him to death, and the scene goes on for a few minutes. Where, um, you know, they start doing what charades? Is it or yeah? This you know, part kind of got on my nerves. Oh, a bit. Ted, the whole, I mean. Who doesn't know to go get the damn sedative and, but, and well, that's the point. And he had to do sure play charades and tell him three syllables. If you're being word, choked that hard by a guy head. that strong, you're not going to last long enough to right, to do right. The, you know, a but they finally they finally sedative. figure it sedative, sedative, and Inga goes right. and puts it in him. Right. And, yeah, and I thought that was funny, but hey, I, I mean, I, are you laughing the whole time while he's doing that and? No, I'm enjoying the set, the movie. I'm enjoying Gene Wilder. I'm enjoying the characters. I'm sitting there going, my and when God. these when these stupid scenes like that come up, yeah, I'm actually laughing a little bit about it. I mean, it's it's cracking me up. I don't know. I wish I could be easily but, amused. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he but does no. question him about. But the see, there's things in the movie stuff. that I do think is funny, and then there's things like that that's just I don't I don't know how to say it without sounding like an idiot. You know, without sounding like a snot. No. You know, it's just, I feel like it's just kind of, you know, below what I, I I don't know. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with silly humor. There's nothing wrong with it. No, it's just not. I mean, I sat here and said I like the Three Stooges and their shtick is, you know, they slap each other. Right, right. But that's not always what I think is so much funny. It's, like, my favorite Stooge is Larry. All right? Nobody's favorite Stooge is Larry. And it's because every once in a while, they will (laughs) give him a line. And it is so funny. I'll give you two examples. Larry's one of my favorite. Well, I nobody put, will actually. I put Larry before Mo. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, most people say Curly yeah. or Mo, but Larry. I in, in high school, I had a Larry T-shirt, just Larry's face on it. And um, no, Larry. Two examples, me up. and like there's one called Dizzy Pilots. They're flying a plane, right? And Mo and Curly, they're in the back. You know, rolling over each other to fly the pain. Larry just looks at him as they're rolling over on top of each other, and he says, "Hey, you guys go steady." <laughs> I just love it. I no. laugh so hard. That one's not even a particularly funny one, but that part makes it one of my favorites. And then there's one where they're like, "He's got great lines, man." They're, they're yeah. doing like work in a house, and and Mo tells him, "If you do a nice job, I'll give you some C A N D Y." And there's there's Larry. He's like, "I don't smoke." <laughs> I mean, just they give him these lines once in a while. That just yeah, and. You know, or he'll have some physical comedy here and there too, and that's just why he's my. Oh yeah, I like when he always gets hit and he rushes away and stuff like. I even like Shemp. Yeah, I love Shemp Shemp better than Curly. I I think we agree on that. I like Shemp better Curly. Shemp ad libbed a bit, and uh, I mean Goof on the Roof. I'm kind of with you. Goof on the Roof. If you've never seen the Three Stooges with Shemp, Goof on the Roof. It's the funniest one they ever did. Yeah, I mean we've watched it. It's it's probably on YouTube. Um, watch it. It's so funny. <laughs> just the whole thing is them trying to put a TV together. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're throwing the innards and the insides up. But yeah, it's, it's And that's another funny. great one with Larry when, when he knocks the, uh, the knob into the wall with, a, through a hole in the wall and he's like, and he can't reach the knob. He's like, so he starts sledgehammering. He's, he's like, is there any wall. longer arm or a shorter wall? He's like, shorter wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just starts beating the hell out of the wall. Oh my God. <laughs> I know we're getting away from from no, this, no, that's, but uh, that's funny, but man. I guess that's my point. You know, when I say I like Three Stooges, it's it's not even the slapping and the eye gouging that I think is that funny. It's you know the wordplay sometimes that I really like, and yeah. that's that's where Laurel and Hardy is gold. Their wordplay with each other, right? Um, not so much the physical comedy, yeah. and um, I think that's what I I like. I like it a little bit witty. You know, I love W. C. Fields, and I just love the. The stuff he mumbles under his breath sometimes oh, if you're listening. Yeah, oh, um, the subtle, yeah. You know, Marx Brothers. All right, I forgot to add Marx Brothers. Oh, my God. No, uh, I mean, imagine their parents living in the house with those guys. I mean, just the banter back and forth. Let me tell you forth. something. Marx Brothers movies are some of my favorite movies of all time. Right. And those are, I have to watch every single one of their movies at least once a year. Yep, yep. At least. 
Marx Brothers are just, it, it's just everything. They, they don't even have to say anything, mm-hmm. although everything Groucho says is just hilarious. Right. And, 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 and um, Igor in here makes, um, does a, a Groucho Marx impression mm-hmm. when he's, he ta- has a scene in here, too, right. which is kind of funny. But, so, I mean, that's uh, what I, I, I think. And then you could throw Monty Python in there, too. It, it's the wordplay that I think is funny. I like listening for the, those witty little, you know, things yeah. coming up. That's really what I think is funny. Um um, or, you know, like I said, you've got Chaplin, you've got, you know, if you like physical comedy, you've got Chaplin, you've got right. Keaton. Um, but when it comes to, you know... When physical I, comedy? Did you say Chevy Chase? I said oh Mr. Keaton God. and Charlie No, Chaplin. no, I know, I'm joking. <laughs> because he was known for his... Com- uh, yeah, we won't talk about Chevy Chase. Oh, my I don't, even, I don't even like the vacation movies. But anyway, so... Um, I, I mean, I know, I yeah. know. And um, so, I mean, I don't mean to, you know talk badly about a film that a lot of people think is really funny when I come out here and say I love Three Stooges. Um, I'm I'm trying to explain what it is I like about the Three Stooges more than just slapping around. Anybody can do that. That was their little shtick. But they actually had some creative little wordplay in there sometimes too and that's usually where I laugh. It's not the hitting, you know, or the Oh yeah, same here. That that's not what gets me funny. You know, or gets me laughing. It's, it's, way they it's, act it's the way they act. It's the wordplay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I always like how they're about two feet t- shorter than every other adult in, in, the, in the episode. <laughs> I always like that about them. So uh, we're way off on the movie now. <clears throat> so the inspector goes to the house. Right. And there is kind of a funny scene where they're questions where he and, them. Yeah, questions Play, them. They're playing darts. Where they're playing darts. And, and, you know, Gene Wilder's getting some good hits. Oh, yeah. And then um, the detective, you know, he, he totally him. cheats. You know, Gene Wilder's got his back. To the wall or whatever, and he takes them all and shoves them right in the bullseye. And he's like, got that, he's got him in his arm, like the wood. In his right, arm. and he can make the sound that it like they're hit, and he goes, <laughs> "Yeah, that's you know, with his arm." So, <laughs> yeah. And Gene Wilder hurry up and turns his head. It's like amazing yeah, grouping. What, yeah, amazing grouping. Um, yeah, and then so so he questioned him enough, and he, he feels okay about it and leaves. Right, but um, then what ends up happening is that. Um, Falberg Blucher um, comes down and is, feels sorry for him and right. unleashes him and that's you know he gets loose, gets loose, goes to the town and um, the the great Transylvania town you know little right. just like in the old movie right it's like it's straight out from the old movie <laughs> right and their language the talking the nice. set and I love how little, it's all dark and mist and yeah you know, it's, it's cool and the little girls there which is a little shout out to the original Frankenstein yeah little girl by the uh, a uh, little girl by the by the lake, by the whale. By the pond oh, she's or at a whale. Throwing this one's a well. In there. Yeah, and um, they get on a little. T- uh, well, her parents because it's it's all known that the monsters loose. loose. They're boarding up the house. Yeah, and they go, "Well, where's our daughter? Where's our daughter? Yeah, didn't you see her upstairs? They don't yeah. know where their kid is. So she's on a little. What is that? The t- teeter totter seesaw. Yeah. So she says, "Get on," and she's being mean to him too. Yeah, get on, sit get down. On. So he sits down and it launches her. <laughs> Way up into the window, into her bed, yeah. and they're like, they and then she just says, "Elephant, I'm going to sleep." Yeah, so because she's yeah, <laughs> she's sleeping, and you know they get up there. Oh, she's here. That's probably Mel Brooks going, "Act like you're sleeping." Right. We'll just play it off like that. You know, <laughs> it is kind of cool. Just the whoosh. whereas you probably break your neck. You know, right? Catapulting from that distance. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but anyways. and then uh, the next scene, um, if it was a real horror movie, that's where they would have played it off at. Yeah. You know? Oh my god, her neck's broken. What do we do? You know, Nothing spray her neck's out broken. Blood. But yeah. <laughs> and then the next is a little shout out to Bride of Frankenstein, the scene where um, he stumbles across a cabin in the woods and there's a little old blind, blind man. guy. And I like And that. who is that? That's, That's Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman. Gene I couldn't Hackman. remember his name. I'm yeah. going I'm going John Lithgow, Ma- Michael Caine, and yeah, yeah. okay, that's who yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, who yeah, the yeah, heck yeah, is come that? On, man. French and connection, Gene. Hackman. No, right, yeah, yeah. This is around that time, so I do thought it was. I did think it was funny when he's kneeling before his bed and he's praying for just a friend, someone to Somebody. talk to, someone to spend a few hours with and talking. And bam, the door opens and. <laughs> and oh, oh God! <laughs> oh, I'm blind, but you're a mute. Come, right, come, right. come! And he sits. You know, and it's, this part is kind of funny. I, I did laugh at this part. This and whole scene. Frankenstein's just sitting there. I mean, just going along with it too. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. mean, which is kind of sit funny. down. You must be hungry. Let's have some soup. He's he can't see. He's pouring the hot soup right on his groin, and he's going. <laughs> and he does, he does it, like it twice. Scoops. Then he does pour him some a big mug of wine, and right. he's Frankenstein's all happy. He's going to get it. You know, right. he clashes into it, breaks it. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> so he's just like, nothing's going right for me, you know, right? just to look in Frankenstein's face. And then, uh, you, know? you know, I've been saving, and then the cigars, they go to have a cigar. And that's <laughs> even in the original part of Frankenstein, the, the guy's like, you know, smoke, good, good but, smoke. But he lights his, his, his thumb. thumb. He's like, yeah, you know, hold it just right there, and he, and he takes the candle or whatever. And he, and he freaks out because it's burning his, his thumb. thumb. <laughs> and, and Frankenstein's monster just freaks out. <laughs> like, hell, hell with this. <laughs> he's just running out the door, door and bashing out. it down. He's just, and, and then it is funny because he comes out Gene Hackman's character because I was like wait I was going to make espressos <laughs> you know? so, so, that fine, so he doesn't get what's going on <laughs> yeah no idea what that he did all this to him so, yeah. so that part's kind of funny and then uh, I'm glad stumbling. you laughed a little I did, I did laugh at it. I, the silly humor doesn't get me as much but right. um, you know that was that was slapsticky funny and I, you know I can't I can't <laughs> lie and say I didn't laugh at that so Gene Wilder he's, he's in a disguise but he's playing some uh, violin music because we know the monster likes music. Yeah, music soothes the savage beast, so they're playing some music in the town. Seemed like to a little Sherlock him. Holmes throwback there. Yeah. He's all in disguise, disguise. with the uh, violin going. And, and uh, sure enough, the monster does uh, creep into town, and they throw a net on him. They get him down to the ground. Get and for some reason, you know, they don't have a problem with the sedative this time. Inga gets him, like, right in the shoulder blade, which I work in the medical field. You don't give injections there. <laughs> um, you're going to snap the needle. Um, right. so the bones. I don't know how that medicine really worked. I don't know. I don't even know what it was. But anyways, they got him in there. Um, right, they get him back, back to the, the laboratory. And they do get him and put him in a room all changed up, chained up. Chained up, up locked up. This is a funny part, though, for me, uh, where he tells them, he goes, I'm going in there. Don't yeah. let me out. No matter what I say, right? You know, and he's Jesus he Christ! To, open the door, please, God, forsaken this little bit of you. Just uh, what he says is just so yeah, funny. Yeah. Yeah, he's calling that's, him, that's classic, calling him dirty names and yep. hollering, say, "What's wrong with you?" But then he realizes they're not going to let him out, so he goes back and he's 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 talking all nice to him like a little baby. Yeah, like, tell me he's a good boy yeah, and good he can't boy. help it, and you know. That is, is a nice thing. Classic Gene. Classic right. Gene in that scene. And this is where he kind of settles the Savage Beast. Right, right. You know? and, and one of the classic parts of the movie is where, you know, they're in the theater. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You don't like this it. This part, anyways. oh, I gritted my teeth the whole time. But he's going to introduce the, the monster to the... To the public. Yeah, and all the scientists. Kind of take away the fears that, and, yeah. you know, and, and explain what he's done. Yeah, so so he, so he they, Sounds they good introduce on the surface. him... <laughs> it was funny to me, not to Ted. So, so they open the curtains, and uh, you know, Frederick, you know, Frankenstein starts. Um, and he, he's he's gone with his name now. He he's embraced Frankenstein mm-hmm. as his name. Right, um, right, yeah, big point. But um, he um, he he basically tells the monster to because everybody gasps when they see him, and he's in a big white gown, and mm-hmm. he says, "Step forward." I know this isn't just some guy though. Exactly, kind you know? of. I mean, I don't know. But anyways, he steps forward, you know, they're like, wow, whoa, you know. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I'd like to introduce you to the more, like, sophisticated person or whatever. He yeah. turns off the lights, and the lights come back up, and the Frankenstein's in a tux. With a and they're both, and top hat. And they're uh, starts dancing to putting on the Ritz. He's got a whole dance routine going on. And oh, I hate da, when da, he... Da, 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 da. Pull out yeah. Oh yeah. And he goes pull out wrists, and it's oh my god. It fuck. gave me the gun in mouth. Lewis. Oh Ted, <laughs> you're killing me, man. You're There's things me. I thought was funny. That just wasn't. I know. I, I thought that was hilarious. And, oh. and when when the light blows out and stuff like that, Gene Wilder gets up and like tries to keep it going. <laughs> right, right. He's like dancing. Come on, come on go with me. Go with me. <laughs> That, that part was a little. That, that part was a little funny. That that was funny, and uh, but everybody freaks out, and the monster takes off, and right, everyone's they basically out. catch him, and they they go and chain him up into right. A little the the townsfolk catch him, yeah, and yeah, they chain him up hardcore, like you know, chains all coming. He's got a neck collar on, and Places chains going all down, and all that. And uh, Inga decides she's gonna uh, comfort. Uh, Dr. Frankenstein, you know, she's kissing yeah. his fingers and yeah, because really putting her hand on, putting his hand on her boob, and I wish there was something I could do to comfort you. And well, you know, if I had been there, I could have thought of something. Oh yeah, which evidently Gene thought of too, because <laughs> I, I do think that's funny when they're up on the the, the whatever, they're, they're the board on the that goes up the plant yeah, that, that goes, goes way up. up to the top for the electricity, and that's they, where they're actually you know having their you know having their moment. Yeah, and when they come down, you know, Gene's got his smoke, mm-hmm. and you know. Everyone's got to smoke after they do this. The file broker here. says, your fiance's here. Or, she, yeah, she comes in with a telegram. She disturbs him. Yeah. And says, you know, I thought this was important. You know, you're... 
Yeah, because he, he says, never disturb. I told you never to disturb right. me when I'm, I'm working. working. And he's laying there under the blankets yeah. with Inga, you know. You know having a but, cuddle. Oh, and, it's uh, funny. You know, Your fiancé will be here any second. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, they have enough time to get dressed, and then she fixes her hair. She looks really, Terry Gar looks really oh, pretty geez. here in this scene, she too. Is, yeah. Um, very foxy. But and, uh, uh, yeah, the the carriage pulls up, and, and there's Madeline Kahn with her turban on, and yeah. evidently Igor thinks she's just the bee's knees. Oh yeah, he's like yeah, he's, he's like hitting on her in every yeah. way possible. It's yeah, funny. Or he says something like, um, uh, I, "I did I did laugh at this part when and, and Gene Wilder says, you know, can all right get the bags, and he's like, all right, you take the blonde, I'll take the one in the turban." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he says it in a Groucho voice, right? Groucho Marx voice, right? That that that's you know. Yeah, that, that's something that you would hear the, the Marx Brothers say. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he, I meant the luggage. Mm. So, yeah, he and uh, Dr. Frankenstein, and they're talking about, you know, getting married. You know, he was kind of hoping to get a little busy, you know, a twofer in yeah, one day. Yeah, but she told her no. Got to get know. married first. She goes, no, don't. And he pushes his face into her breast yeah, I don't anyways. get that, man. Why, why buy yeah. the milk when the cow is free? Well, that's why he ends up, you know. Did yeah, I say that backwards? Yeah. Something like that. But I like it better that way. <laughs> but what, what happens after that, anyways, is um, uh, the Frankenstein monster comes back to the castle mm-hmm. and um, ends up getting Madeline Kahn Con, and right. takes her away. Yeah, he breaks loose. Off with yeah, her. he breaks loose, rips that those chains off, busts out of the jail. They've got him in. And he takes yeah. her to some cave, and and he's. And she's got stripes on her hair. I don't know. Well, just from the fear, I think. Like, like yeah, Bride the, of Frankenstein, kind of white stripes. Yeah. Um, you know. Her hair's not up in that Marge Simpson thing. Not yet. But, 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 right. but yeah, at this point, it's just... And that's know, like in the original story, too. Like, you know, Frankenstein did take, you know, right. kind of kidnap his, his bride. Right. And um, on their wedding night. And, and he's just going to, like, molest her. He's, he's he taking his stone, he drops his there. thing, and she goes, oh, Right, wow. so evidently oh, he's in debt with a... Good, uh, uh, Schwanson yeah. Stuker. Schwanson, Schwanz? Yeah, and, um, Schwanson Stuker. She, as he jumps on top of her and stuff, she starts going off and then singing, yeah. Oh, the hills are alive. Live with the sound, sound of music. Whatever, music. she's singing something else. And, um, yeah. Yes. And she's, she's hooked on him. Yeah, so, She's hooked yeah. on a feeling. She's hooked on a feeling. So the townsfolk, they're all looking for, uh, Frank Sand. I do think the one funny part is, you just see an old guy, like, bang right into a tree. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and then, yeah, they're having a smoke after the, the post-coital smoke. Right. And her, yeah, you do see the the white stripes in her hair, like yeah. you were saying. Um, and, and um, yeah, and uh, Frankenstein tries to lure him back with the To the castle the with the music, which yeah. always seems to work, no matter how many miles Be- away he is. Because what he wants to do is, like, give him some of his... Brain right, they want to do like a, a essence transfer because yeah. he's got this brain that's defective. He can't communicate. He can't do anything. So maybe if I give him a little bit of myself, right, you know, he'll be able to be more than what he is. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're luring him back, and and they're laying there, and they're doing the transfer, and the townsfolk bust in, <laughs> and they kind of you know smash all the equipment like right when the experiment's just about three done. seconds before it's done. Right. So, but I mean, it doesn't seem like there was any real ill effect. No, so. because he goes, let the, leave that, leave him alone. Right, the they're pig, about to take Dr. Because, Frankenstein away. They're yeah. going to carry his, his butt out. And yeah, put that man down. down. The, the, the creature saying, yeah. actually, I do think that the part where he gets up and talks to the townsfolk is actually kind of touching, you know, like from yeah. the monster's point of view. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, again, talking from like a horror movie perspective. Yeah, because he is. tells them what he did for him, you mm-hmm. know. He, he right. brought me to life, which, you know... Actually, it wasn't that long, and he made it seem like you know a long right. time ago. But but um, yeah, I, I yeah. thought that was actually a very touching scene. There's nothing funny about it, and um, and uh, the police officer guy says, "Well, this the, makes this a whole different thing." <laughs> thing then, and, let me be the know, first to shake your shake hand, hand, offer you my hand. Yeah, and um, yeah, so so that's okay, and it doesn't mm-hmm. seem like Gene Wilder suffered too much from the uh, you know busting up of the experiment. Yeah, because they they later on show that. Um, Basically, the monster's accepted, and he's with Madeline Kahn. Right, and together. she's got her hair... You know, oh, up, like, up, totally like the Marge Simpson, Bride right. Frankenstein. Just Total Bride of back. And I, like, I do like the... You know, he's laying in bed. Glasses, glasses on reading his the robe. Wall Street Journal. Yeah, because he's very smart now and sophisticated. Yep, and she's just flapping her yap at him like women do. And, and, and mm-hmm, they're, they're going scene mm-hmm. to scene between them and Terry and, Gar and, and... And Gene Wilder, Gene who, Wilder. Inga and, and Dr. Frankenstein, who yeah. got married as well. Right, and... Um, you know, she's going towards the end there, like, uh, what do you, um, 
uh, he got your intellect and all that. What did you get from it? Right. And the movie ends with it. They're starting to close up of him. Face and you go. Mm-hmm. You kind of. <laughs> it's the Swanson Stuker. Yeah. And then you so, hear her singing. Yep. Man. The Swanson Stukers. Yeah, and that's that basically ends. I do like when she says about the hampers because that's what she's yapping at about hampers. I've got a hamper in here for your shirts. The other ones are for socks and and you. Know, Poopy underwears. Yes. <laughs> Why she would say that is just yeah, beyond me. So, <laughs> Poopy underwear. And that's pretty much, that takes us to the end of the flick. So, yeah. I mean, overall, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of the classic Mel Brooks stuff that people think is funny, I don't think is funny. Um, right. There were plenty of parts in this movie where I chuckled. There's stuff that I appreciated. And a lot of the technical aspects of the movie and the score, I, I did really like. Um, you know, the, so there's plenty that I liked about the movie. I didn't waste my time. It's it's one of your favorite uh, yeah, movies. I wouldn't hope not. not necessarily one of mine, but that's like why I said we like to do this. You know, yeah. every once in a while, and there's been a couple instances where yeah. it's a movie that he really likes and I don't, or you know, I really loved Reanimator and, and he didn't dig it as much. Um, that that's partly why we do this. I mean, it's not as fun if you no, know, two no. people just totally you know <laughs> dig on the movie. It's right. it's fun to have a little. Uh, back and forth. So. Yeah, and I understand that, that, you know, everybody's got their own likes and dislikes, you know. I mean, you know, uh, like I said, <laughs> Gene Wilder, he can play anything, man. I, right. I, I just, you know, can sit back and relax, and he's just one of those characters. Right. You know? I, know, I know you did this enjoy movie, it, and you so. said The Burbs is one of your, you know, oh. movies you go back to. and Yeah. You know, on my little iPad at home, I have about 12 movies that I can watch. At any time, no matter right. what mood Same I'm here. in. Same that's, here. That's, that's me. You know, and none of them are, are horror movies. But, um, right. you know. They're, they're just, called your comfort movies. That's something yeah. you put in and you just, you feel relaxed and this is great. Right. You know, it relaxes you, gets right. you mellowed out, whether it's a memory or whatever. Yeah, it's Makes just, you feel good, there's you, know? A, you know. There's a lot of movies I love. There's a handful that I can watch any day of the week, doesn't matter. You know, so... Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. That, that's you know, we all differ like that. So, um, cool. I think we've got um, for you next week. We've got Psycho, the original Alfred Hitchcock classic, yep. uh, planned for next week, which um, I'm going to try to tie into some of the actual Sir Ed Gein, Ed Gein, the, the serial, serial killer, killer that the book was based on, that then the movie was based on. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll be more anxious to talk about uh, Ed Gein. Than, right, um, you know, we'll throw in little anything, tidbits but, in yeah. there and. Uh, you know, kind of like the first American slasher movie. You know, the one that yeah. kind of started it all. Classic. If you haven't seen it, shame on you. Go get it. I'm sure it's on Netflix. If you're watching Bates Motel and you haven't seen Psycho. Oh. Come on. And actually, you know, there, there's a couple of sequels to, to Psycho. And actually, I, I even remember like the second movie. It wasn't that bad. I don't remember like after that so Bates much. Motel, is, that's a pretty good show. show. It's it's not bad. Did you even watch mm-hmm. any episodes? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yeah. It, it's a pretty I don't good watch show. It. Anyways, um, okay, so yeah, that, we'll, so, we'll end it there. Make sure you, you, you like us and subscribe on YouTube, on, um, on iTunes. Uh, give us a search, the Little, Little Monsters Movie Podcast. Right. And uh, give a little shout out. We were uh, on with uh, the Horror Whore, um, Horror Movie Review Guy, and uh, Death Twitch. So uh, check them out. Uh, we mm-hmm. did a little... A little, little conversation, little conversation going on yesterday. with them. So, yeah. Just chit-chatting about different things we're into. And yeah. So, that was uh, nice. Those are cool guys. Yeah, yeah. So um, other than that, man, um, we'll talk to you next time. That's right. <laughs> and uh, you guys take care, man. See you, group.